Good morning. I'm David, lay leader from Arbor Grove United Methodist Church in Perlier, North Carolina. Happy Independence Weekend to you. I hope you're getting ready, ready to attend the church of your choice this morning. You're blessed enough to live in a land where you can decide to go to church if you want to, and you can also decide which one you wish to attend. You know, a great deal of the world can't do that. But whether you're going to church in your own community or if you aren't having services for some reason, feel free to join us here on, on Facebook and YouTube for the next few minutes to worship the Lord that's let us wake up in this land of the free this morning. And don't you let those television folks and the news people tell you otherwise. It's still a country like no other. It's still America. And it's still the land of the free. I know we have some problems here. We've been having some problems this year, big time, uh, in our country with the virus and all the uh, unrest in the nation. But you know, our problems as Americans sometimes are just like our problems as Christians. We're glad to be here in the land of plenty. We want to take advantage of all that stuff, but we constantly seem to dwell more on what's in it for us individually instead of what's in it for everybody else. And we forget that there's work to being a true American, just like there's work to being a child of God. It's not a free ride. Neither of those things came cheap. Risks were taken and blood was shed for our nation to be born and survive. Many patriots wanted to be free from tyranny and they desired to possess a land that, uh, where the population controlled its own destiny. They wanted a land of choice. They wanted a land where the common people decided who would govern them. They wanted a land where the common people could work and receive the reward of their labor. And in much the same way, blood was shed on Calvary for all people, red, yellow, black, brown, white, to have a chance at a heavenly home in eternity. Jesus fought that battle against Satan and sin upon Calvary and the blood of spiritually patriotic followers like Peter and James and John and Paul and by now millions of others has been shed to pass on that story of our delivery from the tyranny of sin. You know, you can be born in the United States and immediately you're considered to be an American by law. But being born is only the beginning of life. It just can, being an American on a birth certificate isn't enough for you to survive. When you're a baby and even a small child, you need nurturing. You need help just to get basics like food and clothing and shelter. And to develop into a well-rounded adult, you need some other things. You need love. You need involvement. You need encouragement, education, and purpose. And by the same token, being born again, which is a necessity to being a Christian, is just the first important step in being a forgiven sinner in the family of God. From the time of your spiritual birth, you need the same things that the newborn American citizen needs. And for that matter, any newborn citizen in any country. First thing is you're going to need spiritual food that comes from reading God's word right out of the Bible, the true word, not just someone else's opinion or commentary. You will need nurturing in the faith, and the best place to start with that is the word of God. Secondly, you'll need involvement. Join yourself to God's people. It's easier in America than anywhere in the world, at least right now, Get busy with other people in their walk of life and in their walk with God. Worship together, sing together, pray together, and work together for the benefit of others, maybe those that don't have food or clothing or shelter. You'll find that the benefits for them, if you're working to help them, will benefit you just as well. And another thing, be an encourager in the faith. If the Lord has saved you, then tell others about it. Don't let your faith sit on a shelf. 
If you've been blessed or impressed with some scripture from God's word, if it means something to you, then share it with somebody else. If it meant something special to you in a time of need, then it'll probably mean the same thing to somebody else because we all have the same problems. And finally, that word purpose, that's a pretty big word. You know, as citizens of a free country, we think about that a lot this weekend. We all have responsibilities, don't we? We need to work. We need to pay our taxes. We need to do what we need to do to be citizens of the United States. Well, you know, you can take a fine sailboat and you can shove it out into the water. But if the crew on board doesn't do their respective jobs, that boat's just going to drift and around and accomplish nothing. But if the sailors get together and they hoist the sail, if they band together, if they set a destination, if they plot a course and they commit to work together, that boat's going to sail, and with God's help, it'll make the trip safely wherever that's supposed to be. You know, our nation is much more than just a big plot of land. It's a ship of humanity. And there are many of us and many more of us being born every minute, and we've not been perfect in our work. No one ever has, and no one ever will this side of eternity. But we have been blessed with the chance to live our lives here. And in spite of our mistakes, we have constantly improved and tried to live out our ideals and our creeds, and we were the most successful when we worked together with each other and with God to get there. But work we must. It's not been, nor will it ever be, a free ride. We have to work at it. And we have to find ways to work together, steering toward the same destination. And in just this way, our walk with God's not a solitary walk. Jesus said the greatest commandments involved our relationship to God and also our relationship to others. We're not in the boat alone. God gives us the purpose, living a life based upon his direction. And God gives us the destination, eternal heaven. Our job only begins with our spiritual birth through the sacrifice of Christ and our coming to him for the repentance of sins. Then we must work to stay in the route that he's prescribed for us to work in. And we must share this good news and share the walk with everyone that crosses our path. There's work to being a citizen of the United States, and there's work to being a child of God. My prayer today is that you're blessed and successful in each one of those endeavors. Happy Independence Weekend, and if you know Christ as your Savior, Happy Independence Day again. I want to give you two scriptures Little single lines that mean so much. The first one is from Galatians 5, verse 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm glad to be living under liberty, both in this country and also in the uh, under the hand of God today, and I hope you are too. You can sing this song along with me if you want to. I know you know the words. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for Shining sea, 
That sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears, America. God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. God bless you. Hope to see you next week.